I've always been attracted to thrillers. I'm not too sure why. Dramas and thrillers are like stories that are based today, uh, real situations, real problems. So I've always been interested in sticking a character in an environment, giving them a situation, and seeing how that character handles it. So I watched a movie called Monsters, uh, directed by Gareth Edwards. And I was really inspired by that movie because the director shot it himself, it was a small crew, and it was like a bilingual movie. And that's something I would never dream of doing. There were a few options when we were thinking about where we were going to shoot the film. We thought maybe Panama, we thought maybe Costa Rica. And then we found out that the, uh, the best actors and crew were in Mexico City. I think it's hard to picture the movie without being in the location until you actually get there and see it with your own eyes. That's when I started believing in the movie. Let's go! Once when you wrote the script, I knew Ian had to shoot this. It had to be shot fast, quick. Uh, I had to have a DP that knew exactly what I wanted. Doug approached me with this film and he said, this is not going to be your ordinary sort of production. We're actually going to take this movie on the road and we're going to film this in Mexico City. And I thought that was a great idea. It's a wonderful backdrop, especially on a low budget. And we really tried to milk all these uh, beautiful locations for what they were and have this great texture to sort of set the story in. And you could really tell on the screen, like, you know, the care that we took to, um, you know, make it come alive. One, one, four, take two. And action. The good thing about Ian and the DP that we're friends first, we have great trust and we have great chemistry. He's a good friend. We seem to click really well on set. I mean, we did this whole show without an AD. So it's, it's really a, a great mix where he trusts me and I trust him with what he's doing with the actors and the scene. The cast movie was a lot of fun. Uh, we had three Americans. Uh, so my wife, Gwendolyn Garver, played Natalie. Xavier Jimenez March played Sebastian and Aiden Bristow played Karsten. The very first person to come in was Aiden Bristow, who we did cast as Karsten. Uh, I thought the first round went really, really well. Uh, I was fortunate to get a second round where me and Wendy were actually on our feet and like worked together and so it was a bit of a chemistry read. He was fantastic from the first moment we saw him. We had something good, right? Yeah. Something special. We still do. We had about four other casting sessions looking for the role of Sebastian, trying to fill it and um, from actors not showing up to the audition to people just not being right for the role, we ultimately decided to go with Xavier Jimenez March, who I went to acting school with. Wendy found me on Facebook and uh, sent me the script and asked me if I was interested in doing it. I thought it was awesome. Um, I wasn't able to go in an audition, but I taped myself and I sent it over to Doug. They watched it, he Skyped me. That's how I met him for the first time. I know this is important right now. We need to keep you safe. So after that, everyone had to be from Mexico. So I spoke to Verity Oswin, who is based in Mexico. She was our producer. And we gave her a profile of the actors that we wanted. And uh, she would audition these actors in the room in Mexico and then send them via internet over Dropbox. And we decided which ones we liked, gave them notes, and they came back for callbacks. <laughs> when we did the auditions, uh, we had them do them in Spanish and English. <laughs> We uh, had to make sure that the actors could speak English too, because I do speak Spanish and I had to direct them in English. Are you sure you've never seen this man before? You know what happens if you lie to me? Not all of us spoke Spanish. I have a high school equivalency Spanish. I myself studied uh, a bit of Spanish in high school and a little bit in college. Even though I'm fluent in Spanish, uh, there are certain words, certain ways that you would say something like if you're from Mexico versus obviously Spain or even like Argentina. Our director, Doug, gave us uh, a little bit of freedom to work with the other actors to be able to see if maybe I could translate some more of the lines into Spanish and establish a closer rapport with certain characters. My process was memorizing the lines in English first for some reason and then going into Spanish. Sobre todo cuando Cecilia está en otra movida. Carson forces himself to stay confident, nonetheless. No one speaks. Landing in Mexico and we did a table read, I just felt everyone was like a whole family. 
you know, we read the script, we all gave ideas, and then the whole film just started coming together. We had a great cast, everybody got along really well, a great camaraderie between everyone, and it made it easy. It just made it a pleasure to work with everyone. This is my first time working with uh, my co-star, Gwendolyn Garber. My name is Sebastian. I need to talk to you about Karsten. And it was nice because we've known each other for a long time, so I think we really worked well together and sort of understood each other's process. No, exactly the same way. Okay, so it's kind of. I think the hardest part of making a film like this is that um, because you don't have the luxury of a lot of rehearsal time, you're kind of understanding the character and, and sometimes aspects of the story as you're going. You know, we have three weeks and we have these long days and we have to get a lot done. I think for me, what was stressful is just giving enough because it's like, okay, we got to go on to the next thing. I'd like to say it was hard, but the fact is that we were working so fast that we didn't really have time to think about it. We only saw the locations probably two days before we shot in them. You know, we never really rehearsed in that location until the actual day. We would talk about the script, read it through, block out the actors. Me and Ian would sit down and quickly go over what shots we would want in that room. And we just kind of worked it out on the fly. You know, it's a relentless amount of work, but really it was the best way to go about executing the film. You know, all the hotel locations we got were beautiful, looked great, looked great on camera. The jungle locations that we got were phenomenal. You watch movies of caliber of like traffic, you know, the quality of locations they had were equal to ours easily. We just so happened to use a Canon 5D Mark III. This was a great little uh, system that we came up with and we could also strip it down and get into locations that we could be very like incognito. And seeing the production value we were getting uh, with some of the environments that we got to go in, whether they were police stations or whether they were forests, whether they were by the water, I think it really adds to the movie. The movie moves really fast anyway and it's all handheld and it's super gritty, so it kind of is indicative of the script. The working environment was really friendly and close, but also very minimal at the same time. We definitely had the definition of what a skeleton crew is. So we knew the crew had to be small, just going by the budget. So it was director, myself, uh, DP, Ian McLaughlin, and Justin, the sound guy. It worked really well because we did have such a low budget and not a lot of time to shoot. Our DP and grip and practically everything behind the camera was done by Ian doing the job of 17 men. And the movie really couldn't have been done without him. Yeah, we got actors, we got one director, we got one DP, one sound guy. You don't need anything else. And I mean, he was doing everything by himself. I don't know how he did it, honestly. He, I think, maybe broke his finger. I mean, he, he hurt it pretty bad at one point. I get out of the crew van, which was a 15 pass van. I, I end up slamming my finger in the door. Um, thought I broke my finger. Any time I was feeling tired or I felt like we were shooting late, I just looked at him and how hard he was working and it was easy to shut up and then keep powering through. This is my job <laughs> and I like it. I really love it. Jerson, our sound guy, was fantastic. Um, when it came to post, we didn't have to do any ADR. I'm the script supervisor today. Wendy was even like, ironing the clothes the night before. Just like insane. She wrote it, she edited it, like she did a lot too. Working with Wendy's been a lot of fun. Like, she's a triple threat. She acts, she writes, she edits. We've always dreamed of, like, traveling together. So here we are, going to Mexico and shooting a movie. So shooting with such a small crew, it did make everything very intimate, very personal. I was able to stand next to the DP and discuss about shots. And then when we say cut, we just lean over and talk to the actors and give suggestions. And he was very specific about what he wanted and what he was hoping to get out of every scene. Uh, we just got to explore things, and I remember there was a day where we were all going out to eat, and uh, we were talking about certain plot elements, and I think it really helped how the overall story finally played out. My experience of working, it, it really does seem like a luxury where you have people that you can openly talk to and suggest things to, and they actually take it into consideration. It really makes you feel like you're part of a collaborative effort, as opposed to just, you know, an actor for hire coming and saying lines and then leaving. <laughs> I had to jump out of a window. That was a bit uh, terrifying at first just because it seemed like a big jump, but we kind of broke it down where I would climb out and then like kind of crawl out as much as possible and then fall, which, you know, made it a more accessible jump for someone like me who doesn't have the most expansive stunt training, I guess you could say. Great. Do you think you have one more on you? Yeah. Before going to Mexico, I thought we were going to have a lot of problems with permits. But Verity Osmond was a great producer. Um, pretty much every single location was permitted. 
We shot in a hotel, we asked the guy. We shot in the police station, we had the officer. She had this magical permit that allowed us to get access to shooting in almost any public location we wanted. The only time that we had a problem was in the bus station. We had to shoot in that bus station. Aidan Bristow playing casting was leaving the next day, so we, we had to shoot that scene. So we decided to shoot anyway and grab little pieces. Usually if you don't get a permit, you can maybe just rewrite a scene and shoot it somewhere else. But this was the opening of the movie. So I spoke to Verity, the producer, and said, we have to go back there. We didn't get all of our shots. So we went back there a week later and did the same scene without Aiden because he was now back in LA. Here we are in the bus station, the bus station we were thrown out of the first time. Things are going better today. Here are the guys even behind the counter. Wow. Better today, Doug? They are going better. Last time was a bit stressful. And Wendy was able to cut that scene from two different days and make it one. So after shooting Fragmented for three weeks, we came home. I went away for an actual gig for TV and Wendy continued to edit the movie. Remarkably, I, I did it in three and a half months and probably would have been done faster if there hadn't been 50% of the film in Spanish. Wendy cut each scene, sent me that scene on YouTube and I'd watch that in the gym while I was working out and I'd make notes send those notes back to her with a time code, and she would correct those notes. When I'd wake up the next day, she would have that scene recut. So that's basically how we cut the whole movie. I wasn't even home for three months while she was editing. As we see their individual journeys, we wanted to sort of separate them even more by having Natalie's character kind of, um, you know, this warm, dirty kind of look of Mexico City. And with Carson's character, we kind of took it the other direction. So we see him in the forest, in the jungle, and we sort of went with a much cooler palette. So this way it gives the audience a bit of, you know, sort of fun back and forth. And it just helps separate kind of their worlds at that moment. Just tell me where he is. I don't know. Finally, when you see all the pieces come together and you see it projected, uh, you see your work on the screen, it's a great moment, you know? There's a lot of pride in that. It's a movie I'm super proud of, man. I mean, I've been lucky enough to be in some really great festivals, and the acting's really strong. Xavier is phenomenal in it, and he's also gotten some personal praise. I'm very proud of it, and I'm very grateful to have been a part of it, and I got to meet some amazing people doing it. It's gonna be one that I think I'll like look back at 10 years and just be a nice token to that memory of, of that month that I got to spend with that crew and, and those actors. We had no idea going into this movie what the outcome would be, but hearing the feedback that we were getting from other people, it just is verification that we achieved the end result that we wanted with the story we set out to film. I'm really happy with the end result of the movie. There's quite a few movies I've made and once you make it, you edit it, you screen it, you're done with it, you bury it. This is one of the few movies I actually really enjoy watching and re-watching.